So today we're going to talk about the existence uh, of irrational numbers. But before I do this, let's talk a little bit more about uh, proof by uh, contradiction. So let me review what we um, did before on this. So before when we were proving something by contradiction, we were proving something like this. P implies uh, Q. We were proving these conditional uh, statements. And if we did it by contradiction, uh, what we said is we would prove the statement P and not Q implies some sort of contradiction. And the contradiction is some statement and some other statement, not R. All right, so R and its negation. And so uh, one way to see why this is uh, the contradiction of this, like why it, these are basically the uh, the same is to look down here at this statement. And so this says if you have a statement P, uh, then it's equivalent to proving not P implies R and not R. Uh, so this is sort of a, a generalization of this if you think about it, because uh, this in some sense is your big statement P, and then not P of course, would be not this. Remember, not P implies Q is the same as P and not Q. So one way to, tr to prove something by contradiction is if you just have a statement, what you can do is prove not P implies R and not R. Uh, and you'll see that these are uh, equivalent. So. Uh, some examples of this, the one we're going to do is we're going to show the existence of an irrational number, uh, namely by showing that square root of 2 is irrational. So this is probably uh, the most famous proof uh, that uses uh, contradiction. Uh, you could also prove, and we're not going to do that in this video, but you can prove that there are an infinite number of primes. It's probably the second most uh, famous proof uh, that uses uh, contradiction. And so let's take a look uh, at the statement. So here's the statement. Uh, the number root 2 uh, is irrational. And so that, of course, is our p. And what we want to do is we want to show that if we assume not p, that'll imply some ridiculous outcome, some contradiction, r and not r. And of course, not p is the opposite of the number root 2 is irrational, which would be the number root 2 is rational. So not p would be root 2 is uh, rational. And let me remind you what it means to be a rational number. So if root 2 is rational, that means root 2 is an element of the rational numbers, q. And remember what q is equal to. q is equal to the set of numbers a over b such that a and b are integers and b cannot be equal to 0 because you can't divide by 0. So b is not equal to 0. So when we assume root 2 is rational, what we're assuming is that it can be written in this form a over b, uh, where a and b are integers and b is not equal to 0, versus when we assume it's not, it's to be irrational, means it can't be written like this. All right, so let's let's take a look at the proof, and so we'll write proof. And in parentheses here, I'm going to put contradiction because that's how we're going to prove this. So contradiction. All right, so how do we start out a, a proof by contradiction? We assume not, so we assume <coughs> root two is not irrational, or the same thing as saying root two is ira is rational. So suppose. Suppose root 2 is rational. Then, right, so then what can we, what can we say? So we can say then um, we can rewrite root 2 as a or b. So then root 2 is equal to a divided by b. where a and b are integers, so a and b 
our integers. Uh, and let's, let's assume that this fraction is reduced, so with nothing in common. In particular, so you don't know this yet, but this is the way the proof's going to wind up. What's going to happen? What's going to happen is basically, if this is the case, we're going to be able to show that both a and b are odd. Uh, so I'm going to just point this out right here. In particular, both a and b cannot be e not odd, but even. Sorry. So let's turn out that a and b are both even. So in particular, uh, in particular, a and b cannot both be even. A and b. cannot be both even. And that's pretty obvious. If they're both even, then they both be divisible uh, by 2. All right, so you could say, in particular, A and B cannot be both even. Or we'll say, you could also say, in particular, A and B cannot both uh, be divisible by uh, 2, cannot uh, be both even. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> that's where I'm going to start. And then we'll hit a notice. So notice, notice what? All right, notice. Um, and we'll start here uh, with um, with a squared. All right. So notice, and, and let me just kind of show you what I'm doing on the side. On the side, I'm I'm looking at this thing. I'm gonna mess around with it. You notice if you move over the b, you get root uh, you get root two times b is equal to a. Oh, and so then I notice that if you square both sides, you get two times b squared uh, is equal to a squared. And so that what that tells me is that a squared is basically even. So I want to say that. So I'm gonna say a squared is equal to, and equal to what? Well, I can kind of mess around with this because. I can do a squared, and I can multiply top and bottom by b squared. And I can rearrange the, the terms and write, you know, a over b quantity squared times b squared. And I can get exactly what I kind of have over here, which is what I'm thinking kind of on the, on the side. So this would be equal to uh, a over b quantity squared is root 2 squared times b squared which equals 2 b squared. Hence, hence what? Hence a squared equal to 2 b squared is even. So hence a squared, which is equal to here 2 b squared, is even. And so then what do we know about A? Thus, A must be must be even. So we've, we've shown this. If we have A squared uh, is even, then we have shown that A uh, also has to be even. This also works for um, odd. So we've shown this sort of stuff like, you know, hey, if, if A squared uh, is even. This implies a is even. And we've even shown before that if a squared is odd, this would imply that a is odd. So now we know that a is even. So so what from here? So we have a squared, <coughs> thus a must be even. So let's underline this so you can see that we have thus a must, I should have a b in there, so must be uh, even. Right, so must be even. Okay, so then um, also notice Uh, so notice, oh, no, 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 I don't want to do that. <clears throat> so I want to use this now, this thinking here. Okay, so I, I want to use this, the fact that uh, 
a is even. So let's go back here. So that's a must be even, um, comma, which means a is equal to 2 times c for sun c and z. And of course, this is by the definition of uh, being even, but I, we've come far enough now that we don't have to explicitly say uh, by the definition. I think we can uh, just infer it here. Uh, all right, so then, all right, so let's see where are we at. Let's make sure this all makes sense. So notice this, hence this, thus this, which means this isn't even. Uh, the notice. Then notice what? So we want to say something about uh, b squared. So then notice b squared, which is really b squared times uh, a squared divided by a squared. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing here, uh, which is then you can rewrite this as b over a quantity squared times a squared, which is equal to, so a over b is root 2, so b over a is 1 over root 2, quantity squared times a squared, which is equal to, so 1 over root 2 squared is 1 over 2, and of course a squared is 2 times c squared, so 2 times c squared, which is equal to 1 half times 4 times c, which is equal to 2 times c. Hence, hence what? Hence we know b squared is equal to 2 times c is also even, so it is even. Thus, b must be even. All right, so let's underline that so you can kind of see. So what we have now is that A must be even and B must be even, but this would contradict the fact that uh, A and B cannot both be even. They cannot have anything uh, in common. Um, so where do we pick this up at? So hence this, so thus B uh, must be even but this but this leads to a contradiction hey what's the contradiction so this leads to a contradiction which is a and b are not even. All right, so are not even. And A and B are even. All right, so there's our contradiction. Therefore, our assumption must be wrong, so therefore root 2 is irrational. And so there's a proof of the existence of an irrational number, namely uh, root 2. Uh, right, so let's go through this one more time. So you know, here's what we suppose the opposite. Suppose root 2 is rational. Uh, then we get the definition of a rational number. Right, we know a and b are integers, and we can assume with nothing in common, otherwise we can reduce uh, the fraction. And in particular, a and b cannot both be even, because if they're both even, then 2 would divide a and 2 would divide b. So they'd have something in common. And so then we notice that a squared, we follow this sort of chain of equalities, and we see a squared is actually an even number, which implies that a must be even. And that's from this idea. A is even, 
a squared is even implies uh, a is even, uh, which means a is equal to 2c. So we rewrite what a is, and then we run through the same sort of chain of equalities, but instead of a squared, we use b squared, and we find out b squared is also even, and then hence b is even. But this leads to a contradiction uh, because we assumed a and b are not uh, even. And so a and we got a and b are even. Right? So therefore, root 2 is uh, irrational. And so real quickly, just to point out, you know, this is our, I'm sure you know this, but this is our r and this is our not r. Right? So up here, we were trying to prove this. We assume not p, and we show that it leads to this sort of ridiculous statement. It is and it is not. Uh, so it's both true and its negation is also true. I just noticed that I dropped off the square um, on the C. You probably noticed uh, that I did this, so let's let's correct it. So this should be 4C squared, and that should be 2C squared, and this should be 2C squared. All right. So now the proof is uh, correct.